Hello, good morning to all of you. So, uh, in our last lecture, we have discussed about the uh, potential energy surface, and now we'll extend our discussion um, a little more about the potential energy surface. So, you know that potential energy is a surface. There are lots of structures can be, but we don't need all the structures. So, we have only required few structures on the surface, and that is actually we'll say uh, stationary points. So let's discuss what are the stationary points and how we can determine them. Okay. So uh, potential energy surface, you know that it helps us to visualize and understand the connection between potential energy and molecular geometry. And PS also provides insight into the structure of interest. That is, we uh, say stationary points. And among the main tasks of the computational chemistry, this is one of the important things that we have to find out the structures of interest. So, let's consider the following reaction. So, here we have, uh, we are showing a transformation from HCN to HNC uh, through this uh, surface and it's a two-dimensional surface and reaction coordinates is mostly, uh, you know that this uh, angle, okay, this HCN angle, okay. So, uh, the positions uh, of the energy minima along this reaction coordinate uh, means that HCN and HNC, these two are actually equilibrium structures, okay. And they are connected through a transient state which is actually energy maxima on that surface, okay. You, equilibrium structure you can determine from the experiment because this is long-lived species. Experimentally you can isolate and uh, you can determine the structure using many uh, tools like spectroscopy and others, okay. So, uh, here we have uh, only we need three structures that is HCA and HNC and the transition state connected uh, between these two uh, stationary points, okay. So, now if you look uh, for this surface, then what you can see that for when we have the stationary points, the uh, it is a flat surface and our uh, the slope of the surface is 0, okay. <coughs> And uh, so now how we can determine these uh, stationary points mathematically because we will do it computationally. So we need to understand our stationary points mathematically also. So mathematically stationary point is one at which the first derivative of the potential energy with respect to each geometric parameter is zero. So, if you look for this surface, again I am telling you like this point or this point or this point, these are actually flats with respect to the y-axis. So, uh, the derivative will be the del e by del uh, q, this reaction coordinate will be 0 for this point or this point or this point, okay. So, for any stationary points, uh, we have to get the first derivative with all the uh, parameters is 0, okay, all the parameters. So, here it is the only one coordinate is given, but if you have other coordinates also, reaction coordinates, then with all the, uh, it will be 0. As we, for that we have shown here partial derivatives known the uh, d by dq, okay. So, stationary, stationary points actually corresponds the actual molecules with finite lifetime because these are stable species, they can exist in real uh, time. In contrast, uh, transient state is a uh, exist only for instant and it is cannot be experimentally determined for all cases might be in few cases possible by very advanced uh, spectro uh, uh, spectroscopic techniques, okay. So, uh, so uh, HCN and HCNC are energy minima here and each occupies the lowest energy in its region of the PS. Okay, and may small changes, uh, any small changes on that geometry will increase the energy. Okay, so one more point is that you can have two minima, the, but your uh, HCN is the lowest one. So you can uh, say that HCN is uh, global minima here, where CNH or HNC is one local minima. Okay, so in when we will have the uh, so many atoms are there, we will get so many actually only one global minima and so many local minima are possible. Okay. So next we will uh, discuss little more about the transition state. 
so it is actually uh, if you look for this uh, three dimensional plot then uh, please look uh, the red line so here it's a minima here also a minima and this uh, uh, red line is uh, these two minima are connected by a red line and here it's a point on that line this is the maxima on that line actually okay so uh, if you want to come from a to b then what you have to do you have to come uh, through this way then you can reach here okay so this is actually a, a maxima but it is not the maxima in all the surfaces okay so if you consider only one direction coordinate for uh, from a that is coming uh, going to b actually directing us to b then only uh, this is maxima on that directions okay and it is minima in other day other co for other reaction coordinates for example if you consider this point so this red point is actually minima uh, of the from this all these surfaces or all these surfaces here okay so we can say define the transition state that uh, the lowest energy pathway this is called the minimum energy or lowest energy pathway why we are saying it's lowest energy pathway because from a to b you can come uh, through this way also like you are uh, going here and here and uh, reaching here and come back again in this way but this is high energy pathway not the lowest energy pathway so the lowest energy pathway which are connecting to minima that actually we say the intrinsic reaction coordinate okay and this actually goes through the saddle point and it is called the saddle point of first order and we define this as a transient state okay so we have explained all these uh, things so mathematically how we can define uh, now the saddle point and the minima okay so uh, you can very simply you can define like uh, the for a minima you know that all the reaction it's the minim, uh, minima for all reaction coordinates so del 2 e by del q uh, to uh, so the first derivative if you see all this three point first derivative is zero and the second derivative you know that maxima minima concept the second derivative of the minima where all the reaction coordinates are uh, at minimum then what uh, you will get that your double derivative at the minima will be greater than zero okay but for a transient state you will get del 2 e by del q uh, 2 0 for all the reaction coordinate except only the reaction coordinate which is actually transforming us from a to b okay so uh, that will be less than 0 okay so for a transient state you can define that del 2 e by del q to greater than 0 for all q except the reaction coordinate and that will be less than 0 okay so in this way you can define uh, the transient state now uh, let's define little more about this uh, double derivative so uh, for stationary points in multi-dimensional cases all partial derivatives of energy with respect to each of the three and minus six independent geometrical uh, coordinates must be zero okay so uh, del 2 by del qi is equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 to 3 to 3 and minus 6 because there are 3 and minus 6 vibrational degrees of freedom similarly for the second partial derivatives we will get also the 3 and minus 6 second derivatives and we can write that uh, accordingly del 2 e by del qi q1 del 2 e by del qi q2 and del 2 e by del qi q3 and minus 6 so this leads to a matrix of a second derivative and this matrix is called the hessian okay so second derivatives uh, of energy with respect to all the coordinates is actually we define as hessian okay and if we put it in a matrix form it will look like uh, this form okay now what is the problem here that here uh, we cannot uh, define this that uh, as if all these values are uh, uh, values are uh, possible uh, have some all these derivatives have some value then we cannot actually uh, define that uh, which one is actually uh, whether any given coordinate corresponds to energy minimum or energy maximum or neither okay to uh, make it uh, simplify we have to transform these coordinates to the 
uh, new set of coordinates which actually uh, will get after diagonalization of this matrix okay so if you diagonalize this matrix then we will get this type of matrix where uh, zeta is replaced by q uh, uh, replace the q and zeta is called the generalized uh, generalized coordinates okay or normal coordinates okay so from here stationary point you can easily uh, derive that uh, for uh, uh, stationary point for minima all this will be uh, greater than uh, greater than zero but for maxima it will be less than zero for a certain coordinates here we have defined as as a zeta uh, p okay but all other derivatives uh, with respect to this zeta coordinates will be positive okay so now a few more conceptual understanding about the transition state activated complex and transition structure these all are actually uh, implies almost the same things but they are actually uh, conceptually different so let's see what is actually the transition state so transition state is actually basically a thermodynamic concept it is a species of an ensemble means that when you will uh, learn about the statistical thermodynamics course then you will learn about the ensemble then it's actually coming from the Eyring's uh, transition state theory okay and since equilibrium constants are determined by free energy difference the transition state species is logically a free energy maximum along the reaction coordinate that you have seen that this is the maxima okay in so far the single species can be uh, considered so in a total if you consider the total ensemble you will get only a single species on that surface that is representative the, of the transition state okay so uh, this species is also sometimes called activated complex but this term is generally used in experimental kinetics okay so a transition state uh, structure in strict usage is the saddle point so uh, in a on a theoretically computed potential energy surface what actually we are computing that is we are getting the transition structure that is not the transition state okay transition state where we are getting from experimental Eyring's transition state theory or activated complex we can get from experimental kinetics. So the usual calculated PS uh, in what we do the PS is uh, sometimes unrealistic that we have explained in the last lecture that we uh, do not uh, consider vibrational energy. Okay. So if we want to uh, make it more realistic we have to uh, incorporate the zero, zero point energy on that surface. Okay. Sorry. So uh, actually, uh, it's ru also routinely possible to calculate free energies uh, uh, of any stationary points. For example, at uh, any temperature like room temperature. So this provides actually this potential energy surface actually uh, provides us that in uh, the reaction energies and activation energies at temperature zero Kelvin. Okay because we are assuming that all our particles are exist now at zero level and we are not considering the uh, higher vibrational energy levels okay so all are in the zero point energy level all the particles are existing so actually we do not uh, bother about all this name <coughs> we just simply uh, say that uh, whatever we calculate that is the transient state okay so we will commonly use this term uh, transient state so hopefully uh, after this lecture you uh, understand that we need only the stationary points that is our structure of interest and how we can uh, get a mathematical understanding to determine how we can calculate these uh, structures so if you know now that if you can able to calculate the minima and the maxima that is transition state then you can also uh, differentiate the energy from maxima and minima then you will get the activation energy of the reactions or you can uh, also uh, compute the difference between the react energy of the reactants and products then you will get the reaction energy there's either you can define either it's exothermic or endothermic okay so from uh, this uh, lecture you can actually uh, uh, determine many things from uh, this potential and surface idea that is you can determine the kinetics of the reactions because you know the activation energy now you can determine the stability of the conformers which one is global minimum or maxima okay so uh, you can also define the uh, 
transformations mechanisms because you are uh, now able to define that uh, how it can goes from uh, through a minimum energy pathway okay so these all actually can be connected from the potential energy surface so it is a very important concept and you should read very carefully and follow this lecture very carefully thank you very much